Hey there. Hey there. Ron and Cindy here. Hello. Hey, how are you doing? Hey. You know what? Kind of feels good to be in front of the camera with you again. Kind of does. It's yeah, been a while. It's been a while. It is. Yeah. So anyway, just uh, some quick thoughts real quick. You know, we went to a, um, a meeting on uh, Saturday in Dearborn at an Episcopal church, and there was a speaker there named Jonathan Kutab. I believe that's how he Sounds says right. his Kutab. name. Yeah. And and we went there for the purpose of learning to, 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 to learn some stuff. And and as I said, I, I think I made a video there, and I think in that video I believe I said that if I learned anything or thought that there was something that I could share with people, I would bring it back. Well, yeah, and we did, you know, we sure did. And um, it was some good stuff. And uh, the first thing I, I, I really want to thank what they did there was, you know, they brought in a mental health expert from Michigan State, Go Green. Um, <laughs> That's a coincidence. Green. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think there were people from Michigan, too. Yeah, there probably was. But, but she just happened to be from Michigan State. Um, she was a Muslim. But, um, you know, and she had some really good things to say because yeah. it was good to see that, you know, they understand that people that are into activism or people that care about stuff, they need to be able to take care of themselves, you mm -hmm. know. It, it, it can really weigh heavy on you. And if you don't take care of your spirituality and your and your mental faculties, you, you can get messed up and get depressed and angry and all mm -hmm. that stuff. And she had some good things to say, you know. So, mm -hmm. it, it, you know, it, and we'll share them at a later date. Um, but anyway, I just really... We really appreciated that. And we did. We learned a whole bunch of stuff there. We got to talk to, there were Christians there, there were Jewish people, and there were Muslims there. And, and we spoke to a few people from each faith. Can and, I make a comment about that? Yeah. So yeah, um, there were Christians, Muslims, and Jews, and all three spoke in different ways. Um, the psychologist was a Muslim, the main speaker was a Christian, and I know there were a lot of Jews there. There was a Jewish voice for peace that ran it, so a lot of them were Jews. Yeah. And I thought what was interesting, and I think important, is that yes... All three of those religions have definite differences, mm -hmm. and we all hold to what we believe while at the same time agreeing on other issues. And that's kind of what we talked about is you don't have to agree on everything to agree on certain issues. And when you agree on one issue, you can come together around that issue. And if you agree mm -hmm. that peace is what God wants, it doesn't matter if you're Jewish, if you're Christian, if you're Muslim. If you mm -hmm. want peace... You can have it. And peace doesn't mean like the Pax Romana. We get peace by you coming to my side. Peace means listening to each other and understanding each other and finding ways to coexist. Coexisting. I, for a long time, I was raised that coexisting is a bad thing. Oh, no. We're not supposed to mix the religions. And that's not that's not what this is about. It's not about becoming a Jew or becoming a Muslim for me or one of them becoming a Christian. It's about recognizing that we can all respect each other as human beings who are all created in the image of God. And we can have the same goal of peace. And that there are certain ways to bring that about that do not involve conquering each other. Does that make sense? Yep. Makes all the sense in the world. You know, I'm sure a lot of you notice I, I post a lot about some of the things going on in the Middle East. I've been to some protests. You know, so I'm going to share a little testimony about that, you know, because it, it, that way you understand where, where I'm coming from. You know, when I first started, you know, recognizing what was going on in the Middle East and it stirred something in me to want to go out and stand with some people and, 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 and show solidarity with them. But one of the things I, I recognized right off the jump is I had to make sure that I didn't let it consume me to a point where I got angry and I wanted revenge because that's, that's not a good place to be. And it's not, a, and I'm not saying that there weren't moments where I was, there were times where for mm -hmm. moments, but, but I never parked there. And that's what's gotten, helped me get to the point where I'm at now and some of the things we're going to talk about in a minute. And yeah, that, that, that was important that I didn't let it consume me and make me angry all the time. And again, I, I had my moments. Of course, I'm human. But I think my biggest struggle, I'm going to be honest, through this whole thing has been one of the things, I had a sense of guilt and a sense of shame and let me explain, you know, realizing what's going on over there, I started to feel guilty because I can walk in my kitchen, grind my coffee beans, put them in my coffee maker and have a fresh cup of coffee in the morning. I can walk to my oven, turn my oven on. I can walk to my TV and turn, I can go to my place of worship in peace and, and in tranquility. I have these things. 
But in my mind, I'm going, man, I have these things because I live in an empire. And empires do empire things. It was starting to weigh on me. It really was. I was, true. you know, would you help me out with that, you know? And I like having those things. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I like having you know, to grind my, my beans. I like being able to have a cup of coffee when I want it and turn my football game on and watch my Lions. Yeah, I do. I like that. I don't want to give that up. I mean, let's keep it real. So I had, that was something I had to deal with. And, and, and sometimes I still struggle with that today. But I'm coming around on that and realizing that, you know, certain things, they're not my fault. Mm -hmm. And there's just certain things I can't do anything about. So, yeah, you know, if that, 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 that was probably my biggest struggle. So I just wanted to get that out there so you kind of know where I stand, you know, and where I'm at um, as we come to you. Because we're going to announce some things here that we feel God is leading us to do in these crucial times when you got a lot of anger out there and a lot of resentment and a lot of everybody wants to choke each other. Ah, on my side, on your side. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's crazy. So we believe God's led us to do something. And that thing we, and, 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 it's, and it stems from the weekend that we just had and as we pondered it and, and thought about it. You know, God, where are you leading us? What do you want us to do in this situation? You know, yeah, I, and I think I mentioned this before in another video. Yeah, I, I protest. I, I like it. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I, I have fun with it. I do. I, I, I really do. I'm, I'm not one who's out there. I'm not one of the angry ones out there. But I go out there for solidarity to have another body out there. You know, we were walking down the street after a protest and, um, we're just walking down the street. It was the one in Hamtramck, and we were walking by. You know, Cindy had her Jesus, you know, sign. Jesus loves Jews and and Muslims, and um, guy was just sitting there. He was sitting in front of a storefront. He was an old guy. He had to be 80, 90 years old. And as we're walking by, he just looked up and said, "Thank you." And you know, I was able to just turn my head and go, "No problem." And that's so fulfilling because I don't look like he does. I don't walk like he does. I don't worship like he does. I, I mean, and I'm assuming he was a Muslim. He had, he was stickering with his beads. But yet he still recognized that even people who don't look like him or worship like him still recognize the need to speak up and to stand by his, of people who are being oppressed and that's fulfilling in itself right there it, it, it really is mm -hmm. a lift and it, 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 it just does something for your spirit you know so yeah that was cool that was real cool and it just it just shows you know that it's worth it it really is so yeah and if i could just say too it's you know ron and i are different we have different personalities different approaches to things like this i've been to a few protests with ron and and um, I support the cause. Personally, my personality doesn't get the same rise out of holding a sign. I'll do it, but I don't get the same. You know, we're just different personalities. But to me, it's more about individual people. That's what gets me more. And I have a friend. I have a Muslim, co former Muslim, co former co-worker who is Muslim, who um, has posted some things. And she's not from Palestine. I believe she's from Serbia, I think. But um, she's posted a lot of videos um, coming from Palestine of like little babies, like a little baby who was a day old, who was affected by a bombing. You know, he was, he was in his home a day into this world and the windows shattered in his home and he's got blood all his face and he's crying. It's like, welcome to this world, little one. You're a day old and this is what your life is. Those are the things that affect me more, you know, seeing those individual people. So I think, you know, even though there's different ways of looking at the cause, the point is whether you're looking at it as a big, big cause with millions of people or for looking at one person at a time, it's about people. It's not about it's not about lines of property lines. It's not about you know governments so much. It's not about politics or who's in charge or what what you think the law should be. It's about people. It's about the fact that real individual one at a time people with souls are being affected by this conflict, and it's both sides are being affected. Individual mm -hmm. people with real souls, real babies, somebody's real child, somebody's real husband, somebody's real daughter. Somebody's real friend. You know, these real people are being affected by this conflict. And that's what affects me more. So, you know, and when that guy said, thank you, that, that's what that was. It was one person who noticed, hey, these white people, see, they saw me with a Jesus sign. These white Christians care about me as a person. 
do we have to necessarily agree on everything? No, but they care about me as a person. And that that's important because Jesus did, right? Jesus mm -hmm. cared about individual people. You saw Jesus working with people in large groups sometimes, and you also saw him working with individuals. And God cares about each person. Yeah. So here's what we've decided to do. And, and it's really cool because... I, I do. Ha I am passionate about this at a moment. We're at a at a moment in world history where I, I, look. I'm just going to be blunt. I'm, I'm better at being blunt. You know, I have a different communication style. Not always the best at wording things right. But there's a genocide going on. Plain and simple. It's what it is. So how. Because I have to ask God, because we can all do something. You know, I remember learning in school, they said, you know, in high school, I remember being taught that, you know, most of the German people, they didn't know what Hitler was doing. And then after the war, what the American government did was they took German the German people in bunches and they took them to the concentration camps after the war and showed them what Hitler had done. And what the purpose of that was, maybe to make them feel guilty. I, I don't know. I don't re remember all the details of that. But see, I don't believe that. They knew. And we know. And, and, and we do. We all know. We have the information. We, we have access to information. Like at no, at no other time in history, we can pick up our phones. We can Google this. We can Google that. And, and we can find it. So, yes, we know that there's... I'm sure there are some people who genuinely don't know that there's a genocide going on. I get it, the tribalism and everything. And But something else was said at this uh, meeting. You know, most people make decisions based on feeling and emotion. They, that's where we come to our conclusion at. And, and, and when we do that, we can be blinded. That's when we can have some real blind spots. I know in my personal life, uh, some of my conclusions are totally based on feeling and so I know this is true and emotion and then I come to a conclusion but that's my own personal things that I work on so I know that that's true so what we've decided to do is try to teach now we there's a time for learning now it's the time for teaching and what we're going to do over the next several weeks I haven't decided the exact day we're going to start on it but we're going to teach what's really going on over in Israel. We're going to show you things that you've probably never been shown before. Things that are probably going to make you uncomfortable. But as we go through this, through this teaching series that we're going to do, we're going to talk about Gaza. We're going to talk about the uh, IHRA. We're going to talk about the West Bank. We're going to talk about settlements. And there, these are going to be tough tough subjects but as we go through this we're going to we're going to use empathetic listening so as we go into the subject these are the things we're going to ask people to think how to approach this mindfully and spiritually empathetic listening you want to explain what we mean by that yeah empathetic listening is um listening to another person's perspective and trying it as much as, as much as you're able to remove your own bias and experience what they are from their perspective, rather than what I think it would feel like to be them. Mm -hmm. Actually finding out what is it like to be them. And it's one thing to say, well, you can look at a news story and say, well, I think if I were over there, this is what I would do. But the fact is you don't know what you would do because you're not there. And, and empathetic listening is allowing the other person mm -hmm. to explain to you what they're feeling and believe them. And step into their shoes and feel it with them as much as you're able. And it can be hard to do because we all have our own biases. We we have our perspectives of the world that we think are true because that's what we've known and experienced. But empathizing is empathizing is not natural. Mm -hmm. It's something you have to learn to do. It's something we'll all have to learn. Right. But putting yourself in another person's shoes. Another thing we're going to ask, and we'll go over these as we're teaching this online. We're going to put it on, on uh, YouTube and Facebook is when you hear something, we're going to ask you to ponder it. In other, in other words, listen to what you hear and feel before you come to a conclusion. Okay, pay attention to what you're feeling. Listen to what you're hearing. Be very mindful of that. And then we're going to do something called examine your assumptions and your perceptions. 
This can be tough to do. We're going to walk this slow. We're going to be patient with each other. We're going to be sensitive to each other's different learning styles, speaking styles, understanding styles. So, yes, we're going to be we're going to ponder what we hear and 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 then examine what we feel inside as we're hearing the things, because there's going to be some uncomfortable things you're going to hear that you never heard before. And then just, again, examine our own assumptions and our own perceptions, because that's how we'll discover truth. That's how we'll break on through to the other side. You see, again, like I said, most of us make our come up with our conclusions based on feeling and emotion. You can have all the facts you want, and, and yes, facts and, and um, objective facts, I'm not talking subjective, should override, but that's just not how we are. That's not how we're wired. That's not mm -hmm. how God made us. And that, it, it, it just doesn't work sometimes. It's supposed to work in a court of law. That's where that stuff, logic, reason, uh, rational thinking, but that all goes out the door because that's not how it works. I'm telling you, that's, that it just it isn't. That's not how we're wired as human beings. It's not how God wired us. So these things are going to be tough to hear, but I hope some of you will listen. This is an important time in history. Again, this is a genocide. This is really happening, and I know it's a heavy load to carry, but you know, one of the things that's got me through, and I'm going to end it here, and, and I'm going to explain to you how I, got, I get through these things. I always go back to that AANA prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. Now, let me explain. God, grant me the serenity, that peace that passes all understanding, knowing that God's in charge, knowing that, and then knowing that there are things that I can't change and knowing what they are. Hey, I want to go over to Gaza. I want to wrap bandages around people. I want to dig people out of the rubble. I want to give them food and what, but I can't. I can't do that. And I know that. So I'm not going to, let my head go there and, and, and rest there and, and get that rage. And, uh, I understand that. That's wisdom. It's understanding that. And then, go, then I go to God and say, what can I do? Well, this is something I can do. That's why I post online. Because I can do that. And nobody should ever be afraid to do that. If you know something, say it. And I say, you got to do it every day. You got to do it like Ron Hawthorne does it. We all have our own gifts. And God's blessed us in, with our spiritual gifts and can tell us where to move and how to communicate things and how to do that. But yeah, you know, you got to have that wisdom and then let God lead you to what he wants you to do. And this is what we feel he wants us to do. I don't have to be in anger. I don't have to have resentment. I don't have to, I don't have to stay there, but I do have to do something. And this little thing, I can do this. And I can and I can rest in that and let God take over from there because I trust that God will take care of things. I don't have to do it. I, I, I can't. <laughs> you know what I mean? I can't. It's impossible. That's too much weight for me, Carrie, man. Ain't no way. I got enough of my own problem. Huh? <laughs> Other things I got going on to have to do that. So, yeah, we are going to do that. And, 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 we're going to, like I said, we're going to talk about like things about Gaza, the walled in, that little city that's all walled in and things like that. But we're going to tell you what they really are. And, and I'm also going to show you how to catch the principalities, how they speak, how they move their words around, how they change your perspective their perspective and how they use other people to do that. You know, there was an interview and I'm going to end it right after this with Netanyahu over the weekend. And boy, the principalities were at work using him, boy, woo. And I'm going to use that interview and show you the lies and then give you the truth and show you how the principalities do it. You, you don't have to succumb to that. You can break on through to the other side, you know. And I'm going to show you. It's, it's wicked. <laughs> but if you know what you're looking for, and you know how to catch it, you won't be fooled by anybody. Nobody can fool you. Nobody can trap you in that anger. Nobody can trap you in that fear. You can be free from that. I'm going to show you how to do it. It's coming up soon. Very soon. So watch watch for it. And um, there'll be five-minute skits. It's not going to be these long, 
long classes or anything like that. I'm going to pop them off in five minutes. And that's all I need because I want you to think. I don't want you to, I don't want to try to control your thoughts. I want you to be able to think for yourself. And that's what we're going to teach you is how to think for yourself, how to break out of that bondage of tribalism and being stuck there. So that's what we're going to do. I hope you'll listen to it. And those who will, again, I put it in God's hands. I'm not looking for a bunch of likes. I'm not looking for loves on my Facebook. That's not what motivates me. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I leave it up to God. And I hope that we can all learn something through this. So we'll see you soon. Okay. Thanks. Till next time. Bye.